Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not in a... Yeah, today's a big day. Um, it's the show time, the story time segment. And uh, today we're reading uh, uh, Baby and the Panther by Victoria Sue, one of my favorite Brits out there. And uh, this is book two in the series. So be aware that if you don't want any spoilers or anything like that, get the hell out. Plus, on top of that, we're about two thirds of the way through the book. So there's absolutely spoilers ahead. So again, if you don't want anything to be spoiled, please do not listen any further. Um, I mean, you can listen to the, me tell you about the rest of the week. But after that, stop listening. Once you see my screen flip over, which I'm sure to fuck up, that that's when you want to tap out. So anyways, it's Friday and uh, I think it's Friday. It's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's Friday. It's Friday. That's why we're doing the story time segment. I'm live in Discord right now as well, but it's actually not even noon yet my time. I'm recording this segment because the band has the last gig of the year. We don't have anything else booked right now of the year tonight. Um, so when you're watching this, I'm setting up my PA system and lights in a club across town in Columbus. So I didn't want to miss the video. I figured I would, uh, <clears throat> I figured I would go ahead and, uh, you know, I'll put this all up for you. Um, for some reason, the ticker did not take my ticker update. That's bullshit. So what you're seeing is the ticker from the last time. But I swear to God, I updated it. I updated it. That's bullshit, too. Everything's bullshit today. Nothing's working right, but that's all right. So um, we're doing our morning coffee segment on Sunday. I will be live for that. Um, I'm going to do that, then I'm going to rush off and play games with my brothers, and then White Chocolate's coming over to record some rap Sunday evening. So I'll be back around for then. Um, in the meantime, pay no attention to all the things I fucked up on the ticker today, because that's not accurate. Right now I'm working on Baby and the Panther by Victoria Sue. Um, we should be starting Heal from uh, from Nora Phoenix tomorrow, I think. Um, if not, certainly on Monday, but there's a chance we could be starting it tomorrow. That's what we got. Let me clear some Come out of my throat here. Give me one second. I'm going to try doing a flip over here. See, now my screen should be up in the corner. So that shit's not right. Let's see how we fix that. Give me one second here to fix that bullshit. Um, that needs to be number one. Look at that. Thank you very much. And, uh... Hopefully I don't have to switch back over because that'll change again. I bet you it does, too. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I need to change that programming, too. <sighs> We're going to get it, though. Don't you worry. <clears throat> see, I have separate shows set up now, so I can do a Talk to the Beard show. I can do a story time show. I can do a morning coffee show from either the booth or upstairs in the control room. It's very slick, this whole vMix program. But I'm still getting it down to a science Science means you fuck shit up until you fix it. That's the definition of science. So, um, we're going to go ahead and get flipped over here to do this reading. <clears throat> so, what you're seeing here is my Reaper screen. I've also got the PDF lined up. So, you should be able to see that scrolling in the background. You're probably not going to be able to read that very effectively. I don't, I don't really care about you reading it or not. Then we have OneNote. That is a program where I have all the notes from my lovely TNA, Trace, who did my pre-production on this book. We're going to be in chapter 16 today. And uh, you should be able to hear Trace in the background, too. Are you back there, Trace? I am here. Hello. Ta-da. So, here we go. Remember, if you don't want spoilers, don't keep watching. This is my first session of the day, so I'm like all... I've got my, my lovely morning voice going on. <laughs> Chapter 16 Kai was filthy and tired, and of course Maddox decided he was wide awake, thank you very much, and wanting entertaining when all Kai wanted was some Stop. quiet and very... Well, that's bullshit, too. You know what we should do? We should take the ticker off of the bottom of the screen, and we should put the, uh, we should have the old Discord set up, you know what I mean? Let me see how I do that. One. Now we want da, 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 this to be in two. And we do not want the ticker on. 
Fuck you, wrong ticker. There we go. There. See? That looks so much better to me. It's like we're in Discord again. We are in Discord, but it's like we should be in Discord. Yeah, it's slick, but... I'm responding to Tracy typing in Discord. It's slick, but it needs to do that automatically, which it can. I can program it. I just I haven't got it quite set up right. And you know why I think I had it set up the other way is because the last story time segment we did was for Anna Bird. And we weren't doing a... <clears throat> because story time sometimes can be be me just telling a story, not actually working on something like this, like a work in progress. So I had it set up for that. I should probably have two different setups, even though it's the same segment. It's a lot better than it was. I mean, come on. It looks way better than it used to. If you look at this, the uh, story time segments or the work in progress segments, which they've kind of melded into one. They're like a Vulcan mind bend. If you look at those from like a year ago, this is so much better. I'm saying all this to justify what I do in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's necessary in life. Kai was filthy and tired. And of course, Maddox decided he was wide awake, thank you very much, and wanted entertaining, when all Kai wanted was some quiet and very alone time with Marco. Marco chuckled softly and plucked Maddox from Kai's arms and nodded to the shower. Take your time, he ordered. Kai only had a tiny spark of anxiety, which he quickly squashed because he'd seen Marco very deliberately lock both the main door and the patio door to their rooms, so he knew no one was getting in. And for the first time... Kai wished Maddox was asleep for another reason. Because he wanted Marco to join him in the shower. He'd quite like Marco to touch him anywhere he wished. His skin was starved. His heart was starved. What had he been thinking? He'd done nothing but push Marco away when he was the best thing that had ever happened to him. He turned on the water and wondered if Marco had eaten. If he should offer to get him something? Maybe coffee? Overwhelming nausea suddenly washed over him. Guy threw out a hand in complete panic to anchor himself and breathed rapidly through his mouth to banish it. He'd swear, but that would involve moving his lips, and they were very firmly closed. He could say fuck very loudly in his head, though. His idea for coffee had very quickly brought up the scent in his imagination and the taste as it ran down his throat. Fuck, fuck, fuck. That was almost as bad as the hot chocolate. Kai could feel the blood drain from his face and his dinner come up to meet it. He barely made it to the toilet and just thanked anyone that was listening. The sound of the water drowned out the sound of him being sick. The sound of him being sick. <laughs> yeah, um, Tracy's role in this is to be my lovely TNA. That's exactly what Trace does. I normally don't use acronyms. Anyone that was listening, the sound of the water drowned out the sound of him being sick. He collapsed almost onto the floor and leaned his head back against the wall. His head was swimming and his belly was still roiling. He shut his eyes for a moment and the next thing he knew, strong arms were lifting him up off the floor. Kai, what's wrong? Worry threaded its way very audibly through Marco's words and Kai tried and failed to hold back a sob. Sweetheart? Marco sat down on the floor, clutching Kai to him. Kai buried his head in Marco's shirt, conscious of the fact that he hadn't brushed his teeth and just wanted to die. The fact that he hadn't brushed his teeth and just wanted to die. Maddox has been asleep for ages, and I was going to join you, but then I thought I'd better check because you seem to be taking a long time and this is totally the wrong voice. Because of the fact that he hadn't brushed his teeth and just wanted to die. Maddox had been asleep has. Because of the fact that <clears throat> he hadn't brushed his teeth and just wanted to die. Maddox has been asleep for ages and I was going to join you but then I thought I'd better check because you seem to be taking a long time and it wasn't like you. He stood and turned the shower off. Kai huffed. He had that right. He'd been so panicked with the thought of Chrissy being alone with Maddox that day, he'd barely paused to grab a towel. How do you feel? Kai took an easier breath. A bit better. It's just been a long couple of days, I guess. Marco didn't reply, and Kai didn't dare look him in the face. I need a shower. 
and to brush my teeth. Marco kissed the top of his head. Do you feel like you can stand? Yes, Kai croaked out. You feel like you can stand? Yes, Kai croaked out. Marco stood, then simply picked him up with seemingly no effort, walked into the bedroom, deposited him on the bed, and shot him a stern look. Stay there. Kai watched as Marco disappeared into the bathroom. Stern look. Stay there. Kai watched as Marco disappeared into the bathroom and turned on the water again. He came back at the same time as he was pulling his shirt over his head. If Kai hadn't felt so gross, he could have appreciated Marco's powerful muscles and the sleek cat-like sway of his hips. Kai blinked as Marco shoved down his pants, and Kai really wished he felt better. Marco smiled so, gently. Really, really. Oh, really, really, uh... Marco's powerful muscles and the sleek cat-like sway of his hips. Kai blinked as Marco shoved down his pants and Kai really, really wished he felt better. Marco smiled gently, almost as if Kai had said that out loud. Aloud. Shoved Wished he felt better. Marco smiled gently, almost as if Kai had said that aloud. Then he scooped Kai up and carried him to the bathroom, settling him down gently in front of the sink. Kai brushed his teeth and immediately felt fresher. Then Marco simply stripped Kai, and Kai didn't have either the energy or the inclination to object. Marco eased him into the shower, and when Kai reached for the body wash, Marco hushed him and told him to stay still. Kai closed his eyes at the first touch of Marco's hands on his skin. Marco started at his feet and moved up his legs. He quickly gave Kai's now awake cock some loving attention. I feel like I should probably say- I know, but I'm, this is my first sex scene. Can you just be patient with me? And uh, mom, if you're watching, <clears throat> don't. Some loving attention. When his hands moved higher, Kai groaned pathetically. Marco didn't leave a single inch of Kai's skin untouched. His even what he even. Pathetically. Marco didn't leave a single inch of Kai's skin untouched. He even washed his hair. Kai was floating when he had finished, turned on yes, because this was Marco, but more lulled into a blissful state. I can do that better. Pathetically. Marco didn't leave a single inch of Kai's skin untouched. He even washed his hair. Kai was floating when he had finished. Turned on, yes, because this was Marco, but more lulled into a blissful state of comfort by such tender care. Marco made him feel, he didn't know, important, maybe? Like he might actually be worth something to somebody? Thank you. Kai's voice broke. No one had ever done that, taken such good care of him. All his life, he had felt like he should apologize for who and what he was, but Marco made him feel precious. He dried him just as carefully and settled him in bed before getting in and pulling him close. You are never allowed to change your mind now, Kai whispered when he was convinced Marco had drifted off to sleep. You can't let go. Never, Marco rumbled back and tightened the arm he had laid possessively across Kai's hips. Then he raised his head a little to kiss the side of Kai's cheek and swiped him with his tongue. Ew. Kai chuckled sleepily. Just so you know, Marco said, I've licked you. So you're mine. Kai could hear the satisfaction in his voice. He was still laughing when he went to sleep. I thought you were supposed to pee on someone's leg when you wanted to. Does licking work too? Licking does work too, yes. Just checking. He went to sleep. I still think peeing works better. He went to sleep. Kai woke at Maddox's cry. It was still dark outside, but the warmth of Marco's body spooning his made his heart melt. He shuffled and Marco moved. 
I'll get him. You go pee or whoa, that's Marco. His made his heart melt. He shuffled and Marco moved. I'll get him. You go pee or whatever. Kai didn't need to be told twice. He went, plus got in another sneaky toothbrushing because he felt okay this morning. Marco was just snapping closed Maddox's onesie when he returned, and he climbed back into bed and held his arms out. The bottle warmer dinged after a moment, and Marco handed it over. Then he went into the bathroom. Kai kissed his son and told him how beautiful he was, and whispered he'd be absolutely perfect if he would give Daddy at least another hour before he needed him again. Not that Kai was planning on getting any more sleep. The baby gods must have been smiling on him, because by the time Marco came out of the bathroom and made up another bottle for the next round, Maddox had emptied the current one and was doing a rather good impression of a guppy. His eyes were very firmly shut, though. Marco grinned and picked him up, kissing his forehead softly, and settled him back in his crib. Kai scooted over and made a big show of fluffing pillows, because what if he isn't interested? He could be tired. He, he probably was tired. Crap, he was probably exhausted. Kai. Kai suddenly focused on Marco, who had managed to climb into bed while he was off in his own world worrying. Marco lay on his back and stretched out his arm. Kai didn't need to be asked twice, and he snuggled in, loving how Marco's arm came around his back possessively. They were so close now. Marco's warm breaths puffed into his hair as Kai laid his head on Marco's chest. Kai could hear Marco's heartbeat, a big steady thump, thump in his ear that seemed to hold him as safe as the arms around him. He moved. As safe as the arms around him. He moved. It could be taken as a casual resettling to get himself comfortable or an absent-minded shuffling like everyone did just after they got into bed to get their position just right. He blew out a steady breath, feeling his cock pressed against Marco's hip. Marco's own steady breathing hitched a little. Kai wasn't brave enough to search out Marco's cock with his fingers to see if their proximity was having the same effect on him as it was on Kai's body. He wanted it to, though. He felt the kiss that Marco pressed onto his hair and looked up. Their lips were maybe three inches apart, and Kai narrowed his gaze on them, knowing Marco's shifter sight, even in the dim room, would see what he was doing. He waited a beat, and nothing happened. Marco didn't move, didn't speak. Marco's <clears throat> shifter sight, even in the dim room, would see what he was doing. He waited a beat. And nothing happened. Marco didn't move, didn't speak. So he licked his lips encouragingly. Well, that didn't seem to work either. Taking every scrap of courage he had, he inched higher. Marco didn't move. They were almost touching, and everything in Kai seemed to teeter on a nice edge until Marco dipped his head a fraction and their mouths met. He'd kissed Marco before, once in a drugged haze and plenty of times after they had gotten home, but this almost felt like the first time. The soft touch of warm lips meeting his was like coming home. He lifted up and leaned over Marco, not taking his lips away for one moment. Marco's hands, now free, slid through his hair and anchored Kai's head still as if he was going to pull away. If Kai's mouth hadn't been so distracted, he'd have laughed at the absurdity. He moaned softly, encouragingly, and rocked until he could feel Marco's hard length, and exulted, knowing it was because of him. Length, and exulted, knowing it was because of him. He broke away and sucked along Marco's jawline as Marco obediently lifted it for him. Marco's hands smoothed their way down his back and under the waistband of his sleep pants. Too many clothes, he whispered. Marco hummed in seeming agreement and went back to do that line because that was supposed to be Kai. I think he's going to pork him. Their way down his back and under the waistband of his sleep pants. Their <clears throat> way down his back and under the waistband of his sleep pants. Too many clothes, he whispered. Marco hummed in seeming agreement as he worked them down. 
Guy's heart was tripping and racing as Marco's hands slid over his ass and scraped his thighs as he took them off. Now yours, he said against the warm skin of Marco's throat. Marco rolled, fast, very fast, but he cushioned Kai's body as he turned him. Kai almost whimpered, luxuriating in the feeling of being trapped under all that strength. Are you sure? Kai wriggled invitingly, his whole ached with the thought of Marco filling him. Yes. I don't just mean for that, Marco said, and met Kai's gaze. This isn't casual. I want all in. I want us to be mates and to make a family. I want Maddox to be my son. I want everything with you. Kai's heart swelled so much he thought it might burst. This gorgeous man wanted him for keeps, and Kai wanted him right back. I won't be easy. I still have a lot of problems with trust. Marco smiled gently and rewarded the statement with a kiss. I know, sweetheart. And I love that you can tell me. I've spent all my life running from the situation I was born into. But I'm done. It might need to be faced, and I hate that I'm putting you in impossible danger. <clears throat> running from the situation I was born into. But I'm done. It might need to be faced. And I hate that I'm putting you in impossible danger, but I tried letting you go. And look how that turned out. They both chuckled, lips against lips, as they laughed together. I'm stronger than I look, Kai said, because he didn't want inequality. He didn't want Marco to ever feel like he had to hide things. You're the strongest person I know, Marco whispered. You amaze me. Marco skimmed his lips over Kai's mouth, his throat, then worked his way down his chest, carefully trapping one nipple in his mouth and rimming it with his tongue. Huh. Kai made a startled noise as lust suddenly shot from his nipple to his cock. Fuck, he whispered weakly, and Marco raised his head. Like? Kai nodded in amusement, then closed his eyes and arched in a desperate plea for more. He was stunned because his nipples had never been his thing. He knew some people got off on them, but... He whined at the first touch of Marco's teeth, squirming for more. They didn't know what to do with his hands, so he held the back of Marco's head and scraped his nails through Marco's hair. He heard the rumbled approval from Marco's throat. His cock was rigid and nearing uncomfortable as he... He heard the rumbled approval from Marco's throat. His cock was rigid and nearing uncomfortable, and he wriggled for relief, gasping at the gorgeous friction. Marco reached lower, and the first touch of his fingers nearly had Kai shooting. Please, he begged. Please. His hole clenched, his body throbbed. Marco lifted up, meeting his gaze, and their eyes locked. Kai loved him. He wanted him with a passion bordering on desperation, but it was different this time because his heart was finally on board. Marco bent Kai's legs and lowered his head. Kai moaned as Marco mouthed his belly and groin, and he did his best to thrust his hips invitingly. Marco chuckled and clamped a large hand over Kai's thigh to anchor him. Kai moaned as Marco's finger finally breached his hole. Fuck, Kai offered weakly, his mind, his body spiraling out of control, he could feel his slick, feel Marco swipe his finger around the rim. Kai panted, his heart racing towards the finish line that was maddeningly still out of sight. Frustration made him whimper once more, but then Marco pushed a finger inside, and it seemed like all of Kai's body clamped down. More, he demanded, and soon two weren't enough either. Marco knelt up, one hand on Kai's inner thigh to steady him, the other on his own cock to position it. Marco briefly closed his eyes, and Kai gazed in wonder at the complete satisfaction on his face. Then Marco moved, and all thoughts fled entirely from Kai's brain to be replaced by pure need. 
Marco pushed slowly, a relentless burn and pressure registering, but almost at a distance, because there seemed to be nothing else in Kai's universe but his love for this man and the urgent need for Marco to take him, make him his. And the urgent need for Marco to take him, make him his. He could even feel the seductive throb of blood under the skin. And the urgent need for Marco to take him, make him his. He could even feel the seductive throb of blood under the skin of his neck as he craved the bite that would follow. Marco pushed until he was fully seated, then breathed for a moment before taking, demanding, a kiss that ravaged Kai's mouth. Kai was incapable of speech, even begging, as Marco pulled back, then pushed in quickly. He paused, then did it again, and again, until Kai found his voice, and pleases and yeses and sounds he didn't recognize spilled from his throat as Marco relentlessly pushed him to the edge. Then, just as he was ready to jump off, Marco found that special place on his neck and bit hard. White light blinded Kai, and he could do nothing but feel. He came so hard it felt... I might be able to do that. <clears throat> White light blinded Kai and he could do nothing but feel. He came so hard he felt it down to his toes and felt the pulsing inside him as Marco did the same. As a teen, he'd heard the whispered stories that when you met your true mate, the bond that joined you was a living, breathing thing something that tethered you to another soul where both hearts beat as one and only for each other. His last conscious thought was that it had been true. Kai opened his eyes sometimes later. Yeah, yeah sometimes he did. True. Kai opened his eyes some time later to realize he had a mushroom stamp on his forehead. True. Kai opened his eyes some time later and smiled. Marco was sitting up, leaning against the pillows, and Maddox was lying with his back resting against Marco's raised and bent legs. He looked for all the world like he was talking back to Marco, with his ooh-ahs and his little shrieks and all the fist-waving. Kai raised his head, and Marco, noticing, bent and captured his lips in a steamy kiss. Bent and captured his lips in a steamy kiss. Kai's hands flew to his neck when his mark pulsed as Marco kissed him. Marco drew back and gazed at him. It looks good on you. Kai shivered when Marco grazed his finger over it, and his cock jerked a little. Marco's pupils deepened as he took in the reaction Kai couldn't hide. Later, he promised. Let's get up, bathe this little monster, and go get some breakfast. Kai's belly did a little lurch, and he immediately told it to behave. Marco met his gaze. And then we're going to the clinic because I want to check you over. The morning didn't go quite as planned, though as Marco had to deal with one of the pups suddenly shifting for the first time in the middle of his lessons and tipping the desk over onto him. We'll go back and do that again. And we're going to the clinic, because I want to check you over. The morning didn't go quite as planned, though as Marco had to deal with one of the pups suddenly shifting for the first time in the middle of his lessons and tipping the desk over onto another one. It had been chaos for a few minutes, until Nima dealt with the rest of the pups so Marco could see to the injured one. Riker had been summoned to see if his new wolf and he had taken him out. <clears throat> until Nima dealt with the rest of the pups so Marco could see to the injured one. Riker had been summoned to see to his new wolf, then he had taken him out on his first run. Daryl, Emmett, and Kai were sitting in the kitchen in their usual comfy corner. Kai was trying to avoid the smell of coffee by sipping his orange juice, and Calvin bounced in wanting to show Emmett the drawing he had done at school. They all admired it, and Calvin bounced back out again armed with three lunch boxes for him and his two drawing buddies. How's the Gamma Squad shaping up? Daryl asked. 
wriggling to try and get his huge belly in a more comfortable position. Kai chuckled and lifted up Maddox. You gonna be a gamma, sweetie, or maybe an alpha? Grr. Uh, uh, <clears throat> belly in a more comfortable <clears throat> position. Kai chuckled and lifted up Maddox. You gonna be a gamma, sweetie? Or maybe an alpha? Grr. Kai teased and Emmett looked up from his phone. Dad's landed. He's going to come straight here. He glanced at Daryl, who shrugged. I haven't time to worry about stubborn men, he said and patted his belly. I'm too concerned about stubborn babies. Which was true. He said and patted his belly. <clears throat> I'm too concerned about stubborn babies. Which was true. After being at risk of losing his twins for so many weeks, he was now officially overdue. And they all knew Marco was concerned. He had no experience with overdue shifter babies, as it was unheard of. And he had told Daryl if he didn't go into labor soon, Dinah was going to have to interfere. That pronouncement had met with blank looks. Dinah, who was also with them at the time, started chuckling and mentioning disgusting stuff like castor oil. All three of them wrinkled their noses in horror. Are you sure it's only twins? Kai asked, gazing at Daryl's huge belly. Daryl huffed and tried again to get comfortable. Oh, I got a new one. Emmett waved his hand excitedly. They both groaned. Emmett had been driving them crazy with pregnancy jokes. <coughs> Daryl's huge belly. Daryl huffed and tried again to get comfortable. Oh, I got a new one. Emmett waved his hand excitedly. They both groaned. Emmett had been driving them crazy with pregnancy jokes. What type of bird helps you deliver babies? Kai raised his eyebrows. The stork? Emmett grinned. Correct, but what bird stops you from getting pregnant in the first place? Kai glanced at Daryl, who shrugged. The swallow? Emmett let out a peal of laughter, and Kai rolled his eyes. Daryl took a couple of seconds, then started giggling, which set them all off. And now, I've got to pee. Daryl narrowly wailed. All right. Daryl took a couple of seconds, then started giggling, which set them all off. And now I've got to pee, Daryl wailed, which made them all laugh harder. Emmett stood and helped ease Daryl up off the chair. He took a step, then froze, and looked down at the baggy sleep pants he was wearing, which was the only thing he could get around his middle. I'm wet, he said in a horrified voice. Kai and Emmett took one look at each other. Sit him back down, Kai directed. I'll go get Marco. Him being wet was what got him into this in the first place. I'll go get Marco. Four hours later, Kai sat holding Emmeline and Emmett. Brrr. I'll go get Marco. <clears throat> Four hours later, Kai sat holding Emmeline, and Emmett was holding Corina. Both girls named after their dad's best friends, Daryl told them before yawning and announcing he needed a nap. They were both fed and asleep, so Kai and Emmett put both babies in their cribs, picked up the car seats Riker was guarding in the corner, and tiptoed out. Marco kissed Kai softly and said he wouldn't be long. They both saw Zeke at the same time as he pushed himself off the wall. How is he? Asleep, Emmett said. Why don't you visit in a couple of hours? Zeke didn't reply immediately, but bent and kissed Josie's cheek, then Emmett's. I have to get back. I'll see you later. And he turned and walked out. Emmett sighed and looked at Kai. Stubborn alphas. They both said in unison, laughing, they went to get something to eat. There we go. <clears throat> Chapter 16 of Bunny and the Panther by Victoria Sue. We had a uh, somebody getting nauseous. We had a mating scene and uh, we had a baby being baby born. Baby and the Panther. <laughs> what did I say? What Bunny. I say? Oh, that's my bad. I'm so sorry about that. Anyways... I love you, Fox. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I will be back uh, Sunday, somewhere in there. So I'm going to go finish this book, hopefully today, and then I'm going to go run a gig. So have fun. 
I will see you all 